Okay, perfect. Okay, broadcast is okay. live. Welcome to the almost perfect podcast, a celebration of fuck ups, failures, and falling flat on your face. This is a podcast that believes you can learn from experience, but that experience doesn't have to be your own. Ha, I'm both perfect and I'm a functional fuck up. Let's learn from somebody else's mistakes. And today we're learning from Bala Wanster. Yet again, third time guest on the Almost Perfect podcast. Three time guest. Burp, 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 burp. Hello. You know, like other people haven't even been a two time guest yet. Like, you're just. Dude, the last I might as well co host. Might as well <laughs> co host. <laughs> hey, we, we, might have to, we might have to just start a new podcast for this uh, the quarantine <laughs> sessions, man. I'd absolutely love that. How are you, Bob? I'm good. Uh, this isn't really... Like, today was really, really productive for me. I had to record a yeah. bunch of podcasts. I did a bunch of writing. I worked out. I've, uh, I've had a good time oh, today. So, yeah, man. It's been... But the thing is... This isn't really that different to my normal life, like staying at home yeah. on the computer all day, like not interacting with society, except for through my Twitter account, is very much, mm. you know, how I live. So I'm, mm. my, my life's the exact same, but I know a lot of other people are suffering at the moment. And that's, that's where things are, you know, a struggle. How are things going for you? Yeah. I man, I mean, you know what? As you say, it's not much different from my like our usual days. This is me as well, dude. I I work from home, design music. I do it from my place, and um, yeah, my sister who I live with, she's often at school and whatnot. So most of the days, I'm here by myself, looking after everything, holding down the fort. But um, yeah, I think just knowing that it's gonna be this way for a while, you know, because at least then I know that my sister's coming home now literally but i mean for the like this has been four days and i think i've been you know i've still been chilled you know i wake up in the morning and i know where everything is and i, I feel good more than anything bro i'm actually pretty grateful for the time i have um like just like to to kind of like i bought a udemy course the other day on jazz piano you know so like i, I have this time to pursue these different things that I otherwise wouldn't have because, you know, the nature of my work is very fast paced and there's always a brief that I'm working towards. Now me learning the jazz piano is just in my own time. You know, there's really got, um, nothing to it really. Yeah, like I think a lot of people are, the people who I guess are middle class enough uh, to be able to do that sure. at the moment are wise sure. to do it. You know, use this time period. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people I'm chatting to at the moment are busy saying that, you know, they're doing creative things and that. But also, it's while it is a normal ish life for us, you know, obviously going to get stuff from checkers is a bit harder. And even for this, yeah. you know, I, ne I needed a cable for this to be able to set up a proper mic situation, maybe have a better webcam uh. kind of situation. I couldn't, couldn't sort that out, you know, but like those are small problems in comparison to what a lot of other people are dealing with. So, it's rad, like it is rad that we have this time now, you know, to actually be able to think about what it is we want to do without being caught up in the rat race so much. Although I guess yeah, it's now yeah. like this weird online rat race where everyone's doing this kind of thing yeah. now. <laughs> oh, this is true. Every it's two like, seconds, dude, there's a live video going up now. <laughs> Yeah, I've turned like I've turned off Instagram notifications because I don't. I'm never watching your Instagram live video, man. I, I love you, sure. whoever you are, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm literally never gonna watch someone on Instagram live. Like, unless you tell me an hour before I'm gonna do this thing and it's cool and like blah blah blah. But if you're just gonna uh -huh. go out and jam, like that's cool. That's your practice session, man. Or let me let me go have a yeah. practice session instead. Yeah, but are you I what? Really are you are you taking in more content at the moment? Are you listening to more stuff, watching more stuff? Um, I mean, like, bro, if I'm honest, I've been, you know, taking it a little bit easy, you know. So, um, like, with the course, it's obviously not something that's terribly structured, like with deadlines. I just, like, open up Udemy and play whenever I, I'm not watching something or, or when I'm not listening to podcasts. But I've just been taking everything in you know and more than anything but 
You know, it's not like it, it's almost like I'm a little bit on a holiday a bit, but I'm, I, I won't be like this way for the like the next like few days because I don't want yeah. it to be a pattern that I get too used to and whatnot. You know. Yeah, I think that's that's going to be the biggest struggle with this whole situation is the maintaining motivation versus yeah. finding time to relax. Like, because it's also, yeah, when you don't have anywhere to be, like, or you don't have, like, I know for people like us, you know, we're used to kind of fitting that in, you know, they're like, okay, today I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to do this from 9 until 11, and then from 12 yeah. until 1, I'm going to do this and all of that. But it's still... You know, it's weirder now because it's almost like, well, I'm not doing anything tonight. You know, so it's almost uh, like there's this weird, this weirder pressure to like use your time even more. Well, at least for me, I'm like, shit, uh, like you know, like maybe I shouldn't be playing Skyrim all day. Sure. Oh, dude, like for me, dude, it's like I'm like on a on a normal day before all this stuff, dude. I'm always, 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 always trying to figure something out, trying to do something, trying to make sense of what I'm doing and whatnot. I wake up in the morning with a to-do list, uh, make sure like I can tick everything off, uh, do as much as I can, end up like working myself like till I'm tired and whatnot. Just because, um, I mean, you've heard it's late. Like it's just about, you know, you know, sometimes 24 hours doesn't really seem like it's enough, you know, so I always like, always trying to figure something out and whatnot so now it's almost like you know you can breathe. Like, it's like okay yeah let's, let's let's live a little bit you know uh, in, in just, a way the way you're not really breath. living yeah you know technically but i mean uh just to kind of catch up on different things like breathing sometimes and taking shits in the morning and stuff <laughs> and not not so, rushing your shits in the morning you know you, nah, you, dude, just sitting there. Got to reply to the email. <laughs> taking a bucket. <laughs> taking a bucket. No, dude, yeah. you know what I mean. So I'm I'm super grateful, dude, just for the fact that I get to to catch up with everything else that's just been in my vicinity, but I just was overlooking it because of other stuff that were right in my face. So I'm grateful for that. I'm already thinking about chapter three things. I'm already thinking about after chapter three things, but not hectically. I haven't activated anything. I'm just like thinking and, okay. I woke up this morning and uh, I was thinking about okay. chapter three. Okay, uh, so I've heard, I've, heard, I've heard you say, I woke up this morning uh, before, so like. Dude, there's so many things, hey, there's so many things that I apparently actually say in real life. Like I was with uh, Eddie, introvert. Um, oh yeah. I was with I was with him at, at Tire Records one time, and we were talking, and I kept going like, "Oh shit," you know, just like because you're saying something that was kind of surprising. Like he's like, "Dude, you say that shit on kickstand exactly the way you say it when you speak." Yeah. Like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so dope. So public really like prophecy. So you haven't ah. really been you haven't really been wanting to go outside uh, anyway for a while. Uh, why is yeah. that? Hey man, Joburg is, uh, you know, you know on the on the on the brochure, the Joburg brochure, you know, there's some this stuff that you know they they they're very well known for, and <laughs> unfortunately, it's it it happens to be the crime. So like even before the lockdown, bro, I I was like fuck that, I'm on lockdown, I'm gonna chill in the house and whatnot, because. Um, yeah, I've, I've had two occasions where I've had like my valuables stolen from me. First time was like I was kind of like manipulated in a way just because I, I, I gave them my attention and I was kind enough to help them with whatever they were asking for. Next thing you know, I mean, it's so elaborate, bro. We do not even have the time to talk about it right now because I have to talk to you step by step so I don't look like an idiot at the end of it. Yeah, I think a lot of people who have walked through town uh have experienced that situation maybe once i was quite young and it happened to me and yeah like, uh, I, I always hustle you i always hustle you fuck. Yo, bro. Um, like bro like you'd think they'd be using their mind for something so much more valuable the way they're so good at what they did that first time they got me bro it was crazy i thought you know what i'll never find these guys but if i find them i'll probably find them at the oscars 
winning best screenplay, best whatever. Because that was, bro, if it didn't hurt so much, I would have applauded. I would have applauded them if it didn't hurt so much. Right? So that was the first time, you know, and that was around, that was, I think, in June. And then July came, which was a month before I was on the head to Ben. Um, and I was going to catch a bus to, to, to Durban. And then they got me in Prof yeah. Station, but they got me differently this time. This was like crazy vibe. Proper mugging. And proper mugging, bro. Like I had my bags, I had my valuables with me, and um, I had my valuables with me. And yeah, dude. And then homies just appeared out of the blue. There was a gun, head pointed in my face, kept telling me he's going to shoot me. And bro, like for the most part, like, I don't know, I, I, my mind had traveled to so many different places in that moment alone. And I found myself feeling like, yo, I'm sure somebody's gonna like say, ah, we're joking, bro, we're kidding, we're kidding. Yeah, and like this is real. Okay. okay. Bro, it's, I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. Like the whole time. Your yo, just is gonna jump out. Bro, I, I, I couldn't believe it. And that shock, like, like I mean, the, the, the thing that gives me the most goosebumps isn't even the gun. And not because I wasn't afraid of the gun or afraid of dying, but there was so much going on, dude, that, like, I, I couldn't even, like, focus on just one thing. Like, I just focused on that whole thing. I'm on my back. I'm trying to pull away, dude. These homies are just pulling at my stuff, gun at my face, pulling at everything. And, yeah. So that that that's what happened, and ever since then. So I I still, I still went to Durban because um I just from there I picked up my guitar, which was the only thing they left. They didn't take. Picked up the guitar, went to the bus people, asked them if I could make a call. Um, and at that time, dude, I had been learning my girlfriend's cell phone number off by heart, you know, and it served very handy that day. I just got their phone, gave her a call, then she just like broke into my emails uh, just to kind of check my ticket and whatnot and to kind of request for some blocking for certain cards and certain accounts and whatnot. And yeah, I was in a bus for seven hours, like why the bus awake for five, five hours. And you, did, just and you didn't there. even, you didn't even have like a phone to write on. Like, to like Fuck all, bro. Time. Bro, listen. <laughs> did you have a pen and paper? You would write. Man, really? dude, the you last thing I was gonna do was drive, bro. I was, I was sitting there, dude. This thing was playing back in my head, back in my head, back in my head, back in my head for five hours. Were you thinking about what you should have done differently? Yeah, I think I was thinking about. I think I started to think about. Oh shit! I could have died. Okay. I could have like legit just died at that moment. I then I started thinking about like everybody who would have been sad, like my mom. You know, like fuck. Like literally to go out like that, like usually, dude, on a usual, like maybe if I'm on a flight, honestly, I probably just say it, but as soon as it happens, I'll, I'll freak out. But I'm always feeling like if this plane has to crash, you know, I'll, I'm ready. Oh, before, yeah, before, before it starts, uh, but when the turbulence yeah. starts, you're a bit like, oh, I'm not ready to die yet. <laughs> like, I'm always like, yeah. before we, before we, before we take off, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess statistically it's unlikely, <laughs> but if it happens, it happens. And as soon as I'm in the air, yeah, it starts yeah. shaking a little. I'm just like, please no, please no. And I like oh, immediately dude. found God again. You know what and I mean? Like, so I'm like now, now imagine in this case, dude. I had I did not expect a thing, you know. But yeah, man, that's what happened, and it obviously. I put that creativity to, I mean, it took me a while to be able to write about it as well, you know, because I think I'm, more than traumatic. anything, I talk about it. What's that? I said it's traumatic. Yeah, bro. I mean, I often, you know, I'm able to write about moments like those, but usually they have to have passed. That one, like, even now to this day, it still kind of gives me a bit of, like, goosebumps just thinking about it. And, and sometimes even listening to the song, bro, as soon as I get to that last verse, it's like, ish, you know? Because that shit is playing back, bro, hard, dude. And I just, 
I always wonder about that with music and stuff. Like usually I relate that to stuff like relationships and that, you know, when you write a song about an ex and then like everyone loves that song and now you're singing that sure. song for 20 years and now this ex uh. that you hated <laughs> is a part of your life forever. Um, but like uh. this is another take on that. Like this is essentially, yeah, like you're going to be reliving, yeah, you're mugging constantly. Like uh. each time you get on stage and do the song, like so... I mean, have you been to therapy at all? Is it something you're working through in that way? Ah, man, this is a song cliche, and it, this wasn't even the intention, but making the song was very therapeutic, you know, Fair and enough. so, so it's lots of we create about. art. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's because, dude, you know what, you know, what, like with getting on stage, man, like it's almost as if, like, there's this mechanism in my mind that tends to like block out things a certain way. Like dude, there's a lot of like, maybe let me not like sound so edgy, but there's a lot of trauma that I might like, a lot of stuff that has been blocked off in my mind. And yeah. there's a lot of good stuff that I don't remember just because it's in the same time, you know? Yeah. So what the, the, my mind does, it blocks off that whole time that time where that memory took place. So even the good gets blocked out and whatnot. So with like performing this song, first time I performed it was at Umi Fest here in Joburg. And um, I think it, it came, I can't remember what song I had done before Nightcrawlers, but I was feeling good. And I felt like, okay, let me just tell the story as it is. And for a moment, um, I felt like I was just telling a story, dude up until the last verse, of course. That one always kind of just makes me feel a little bit weird. But, you know, it's almost as if, like, I'm, as I kind of go and talk about it and rap about it, I sort of become not necessarily numb to it, but it's not as impactful as it was. Like, my sister, so my sister is the person I was with before I left. So she says herself that she can't listen to that song because she knows exactly what was happening there. Like we were smoking together, bro. Like yeah, man, the first time first time I heard that song, I like definitely got panic feels because it is A, I knew it really happened. I know you, I like mm. you. And B, it's a situation I think a lot of people have experienced and been through. And mm. it's relatable in that way. And it's like I, I tweeted about it a little while ago where it was like, you know, some rappers are busy lying about you know doing drive-bys and you're busy like uh, actually writing about being much sure. it's like you know like uh, maybe when i'm trying to feel good about myself i might not put rock night crawlers on but when i went to sure. like, <laughs> have a realistic like you know someone else explaining something that i've been through that other people have been through because a lot of us have been mugged and it's a horrific experience mm. And mm. how how rare is it that someone puts that in a song, you know? And that's, mm. I think, what at least, that's one of your biggest advantages, I think, like as a musician, ah. is that you, you do like create music like the way writers, you know, write about, you know, stories and stuff like that. You know, you mm. think, th think it through and you don't just go like, hey, you know, what do people want to hear? You go, what do I want to say? Yeah. And like, I ah. think that's uh, helping you a lot. Bro, can I, can I tell you something that I was, I was going to tell you when I, when I saw you at Durban? But it's almost like a secret, bro. Well, it's not a secret, but... <laughs> you, you, know key. Live, hey? well, you know we're broadcasting You know we're broadcasting Oh, shit. Live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's not so much a secret, but it's something like I hadn't said yet. Or it's not even really a, that much of a thing, but you can pat yourself on the back. You low-key inspired me to write that song, hey? Oh, really? What, from our yeah, meeting, I mean, like, our last podcast? Yeah, when we spoke at the podcast, I remember you were telling me that, um, you know, you, we've heard chapter one and that, that side of you. And, you know, you, 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 because obviously you know my story, you knew what happened to me and whatnot. And you were like, you know, this is your, not that you're interested in hearing some tragedy, but you are kind of anticipating. And you were yeah. obviously hinting at, you know, and then I was like, you know what? I think I know. You were going through some, know. yeah. You were going through some dark shit at that time, man. When we when we spoke on the podcast last, like you'd gone through the mugging, you know, like it was a weird roller yeah. coaster because you'd also just been overseas and stuff, you know, like yeah. so your career is doing these 
crazy things like where you're going to America, you're going to Switzerland, you're collaborating with people around the world, and then all your shit's ah. just been taken, and it's like, yeah, man. Like, like I remember where you were at at that time. So a lot. Yeah. So did that time period affect like Spajongat chapter two more than you expected, ah. essentially. Ah, so lit- like, like literally, I I, I wrote it because I needed to, but I also didn't want to disappoint you. <laughs> No way. Oh, you know what I mean? Hey, I, I appreciate that. That's the look at honest me. truth, dude. Well, people are enjoying the song, so it's not even... You didn't mm-hmm. disappoint me, and, like, it's one of the more popular songs on the EP from what, what I've yeah. seen online. Like, it was one of the ones that really took off quite quite quickly. And you've got a video yeah. for it premiering in about nine minutes or so. Uh, oh, yeah, it's also yeah. with your brother, man. It's also with your brother, which is really dope. Um, yeah. Like, you guys like, haven't just... worked together in a little while? I think the last like song place? that we had, I think the last song that we had worked on together, might have been on chapter one, which was just the homie. But um, so like this song, Lin Dewar and Gray, all three songs feature Kimo Sabi, and all oh, wait, three songs those are sad songs, like darker songs, yeah, like more emotional like songs. All, but he, his yeah. voice lends to it. Yeah, no, definitely, dude. Like, yo, and I think that's kind of like a a, a for a, a working formula or rather a format. But you know, obviously, as soon as people start anticipating it, then might have to switch it up a bit. But um, well, then, until then, then the dude. Right. Oh shit! You know what I mean? But like, as it stands, you know, he's my go-to guy, dude. When I want to tell a story, I mean, dude, it started off with Lindy. And then great. Did you know, by the way, that actually, no, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this later. Um, okay. But Lin, Lin yeah. Dewey, Gray. What's that? So we've got about eight minutes left here. So think oh, about which one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, like with the with, with Nightcrawlers, it's obviously the second track on the project. So it's like I didn't even give people time to, 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 to really like. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I, I wasn't relax. expecting that there. Like, I right. wasn't. Ex- like, yeah, yeah. The juxtaposition was really nice. Yeah. So, and then it's actually the 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 predecessor to the bike song because, yeah. like, the mugging happened before I was about to get to Berlin, right? So it was like three weeks before I was gonna go to Berlin, and you know I was still a bit shook. Uh, so I got to Berlin, you know, and I was like, okay, cool. I kept noticing such weird things, bro, like how safe everybody feels, dude, walking around at night, dude, the woman, bro, are just walking alone in the streets in Berlin. And I kept, like, like gasping. and like, oh, what? And I kept thinking, yo, my girlfriend would love it here, you know, and what You were not, thinking, oh, one- I can some people. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh, you mean everyone thinks they're safe? Yeah, I'm gonna stop bugging. <laughs> no, bro, you crazy. <laughs> no, just started doing um, No, so I mean, you know, things like those, dude. Like, I kept like I was very vulnerable at that time, and then the lady who was looking after me had a bike because obviously that's their usual mode of transport. That side, just cycling, getting around, and whatnot. Through they even had Uber bikes. Robot Koch, we are coming from the Red Bull Studios. And then uh, he just went on his Uber app and he called Uber the bike. And I was like, and then, and then I stood there waiting for this bike to arrive, you know, this bike to drive itself to him, only for him to start walking out direction and the bike was there on the corner. He just requested it so uh, it helped yeah. the bike. Yeah, and I was like, boring that the bike was going to arrive. But that would be you know, so, like that. That is the next stage, though, the electric bike, the, like, so, the self driving bike. Oh my god! Because they're doing self-driving cars, they have to have the self-driving bike. You've got electric bikes anyway. Like it's not Bro, that much for you. You put a GPS on that thing. You train it a little bit. It'll be great. <laughs> sure, dude. That bike though. Let me tell you something. That bike. Ryan and I rode. So he, I think this is the second time he had requested a bike. So he requested a bike, and we were like so amazed at at the system. And he said, "Yeah, try it out, dude." So I can't remember. Ryan will correct me if I'm wrong, but. You get on the bike, and then you start to pedal, bro, and it pushes you. It gives you a push, it's like, like a, a boost. It's like a, like a single speed, essentially. So, like, the type of gears that it is, it's like, could you go backwards on it as well? Or 
I don't know. I just like was so excited like fixed, I was going yeah, around, but it gives you like a bit of a boost, like some crazy yeah, I think, boost. It's one of those. I think you're talking about like a fixed gear kind of situation. But yeah, like those bikes, because yeah. that's their culture there. Like that's the thing. Like so yeah. bikes there are dope. Like and they like here, like the only people who have great bikes are like cyclists who cycle like, yeah. on the weekends kind of thing, who are lawyers during the week and can have 50 grand sure. to have like a decent bike. Because I can imagine, man. Like, like yeah, the experience is and yeah, you don't want to be riding a bike like that, like around uh, South Africa, because you won't have that bike for long. So nah, the juxtaposition no. between night cool. callers and the bike song is um, like, it's it's so like it's sad in a way, like you know, because mm -hmm. does really just highlight like those elements, but it is also yeah. kind of um, like wonderful about life that it has mm. these moments and it has these yeah. absolute lows and it has these absolute highs and the absolute highs come from something simple like riding a bike mm. and, you know the absolute as lows simple come as through. riding a bike yeah and the lows come when you least expect it when you think you're about to yeah, you know go on a bus bus trip home so yeah man this has been <laughs> quite a wild ride but at least like but I've been a little worried about like, yeah, like, are people going to start breaking into houses because they can't mug people now? <laughs> like, Yo. So, I Dude, knew me so and my like, sister were joking. No, I think it was me and my girlfriend, we were joking about like, what the guys who mug are doing right now. Maybe they realize, like, fuck, I don't actually want to do this anymore. Like, what the fuck, no, guys? I, I want to do music. Come on, why did we leave that guitar? Yeah, um, they're going to they're, they're gonna go steal like someone else's... Um, like whatever chaos pad and then uh, become producers but cool man i think we're going to be getting into this video now have you seen the video yeah. have you created the video what's your relationship to the video because you create a lot of like your own stuff because that's hence your yeah. name bala there uh so yeah, yeah, yeah. how much this of how true. much of the how much of this video did you create I mean, bro, like like I said, it's just me here at, at, at uh, the apartment in Chobur. Um So it was just like a, one of these intimate bit, I mean, lounge performances, you know, I had the, my mic, had my earphones in uh, and, you know, just put my iPhone where it should be because, you know, the cameras are good enough to film videos now. And it was just a performance more than anything, bro. And it was just dope to kind of tell that story in my comfort zone, like safe, in my safe place. Now I say, like, okay guys, and it, like what I like about it is that it sounds almost similar to just how I recorded it. Because oftentimes okay. you find that as soon as you get on bigger stages, you find yourself projecting like a lot more than you probably usually do. So this one, it's in my home. Like, you know, my Spichonga Chapter 2 cover art was on the side. Uh, and yeah, dude, that was basically my my, my my context where I am right now and I let people into that intimate moment and told them an intimate story cool well people are going to get to see that in the next minute or two i think we're going to log out now and give people the opportunity to go watch the premiere of this live video yeah. of yours. thank you so much for your time bro i'm looking forward to seeing you again uh in person when i eventually do hopefully we'll still be allowed right. to hug you know hopefully we'll still be allowed to hey, hug. hey dude oh fuck. can't believe hugs <laughs> okay it's fine we'll figure it out dude we'll just wear we'll one of these things on our body well, we have full, yeah, full body condoms, bro. Anyway, yeah. go on over if you're still on Roots Up TV in the next minute or so. Somewhere on this channel, you should be able to see the video that Lawrence was just talking about right now. Thank you so much for your time. Check us out everywhere. Where can people find you? At Bala Wednesday everywhere, right? Cool. Bye. Almost perfect. Bye. Bye. Links are below the video, as our lovely director has just told me. At Bala Wednesday everywhere is please. The underscore by. Please say Otherwise, the by. Okay, it. please. So, so you got to say the underscore. Bye. Bye. Bye, Luanza.